Hi guys, HCG Berry Babe here, checking in. Um, today was a goose egg. Yesterday I did better. I still am above my last LDW, so I haven't caught, caught back up to when I finished my last round, which was about a month ago. Um, had my interview today, and I was not on time. I got so busy looking for copies of my transcripts that I had printed off and also going into Facebook to take off my old school reference that I looked up and it was almost 2.15 and I was due across town at 3. Didn't have any makeup on. Hadn't pressed my clothes. Oh, shit. So... I was a few minutes late, and I ended up going into, um, the name of the place is Consumer Services, and I ended up going into the first office that had that name on it that I came to, and the girl was trying to figure out where it was I was supposed to go, and I was not in the right place, so she sent me down the hall. So I told the receptionist that I was late because I had gone to the wrong office, but I'm not sure it made a difference. Most of the people inside the office were wearing t-shirts and it seemed kind of like a layback. So she let them know I was there and gave me a pack of papers to fill out. Even if you take a resume, there's always this huge application to fill out. And if you're very young and inexperienced, maybe it's not a big deal, but when you've been working for 35, 40 years, there's a lot of stuff on there, and the people that they would call to find out about me from the 1980s are all gone or dead. Even the people from the 90s mostly have retired or gone on to other things or other planes. And so, um, even though it's all laid out clearly on my resume, I have to deal with filling out this application. So I met with Brian and another girl, and uh, young, oh God, the older I get, the younger everybody else looks. Very subdued, very subdued young man. And so, didn't get a good read. With my ADHD, I kind of chatter around and I didn't really feel like I had um, given my best information. Um, he was very pleased that I was a fully licensed professional counselor. Uh, in Michigan now, there's what they call an LLC, limited license, LLPC, limited licensed professional counselor. And you have to get so many hours of supervision in order to be a full LPC, licensed professional counselor. And I suppose if you have someone that is LLPC, then you have to, I don't know, provide more support or maybe you don't get as much money or I don't know, but he was very pleased that I was a full, limited, not limited, licensed professional counselor. And um, I never had to do all the supervision because I'm so old that when I was back in rehab, in the 80s, the counselors that were working very hard to get licensed um, made it that we were all grandfathered. So I never had to go through all that intense additional seminars and that sort of thing. Um, so I should know by early next week, he said, but real mixed feelings about it. Um, it could potentially be lucrative, but it's, it's not an employment, it's a contract, which means that every paperclip I use, I pay for. Every time I drive somewhere, I pay for that, and then I get to take it off my taxes. Well, what that means is I have to keep damn good records. If I don't, then I lose money. Been there, done that. Um, which I need to be doing for my private counseling practice anyway, so it would be... It will fall right in that, but I have to develop some systems to be very conscientious. But you're only, you're paid $12.50 for every 15 minutes of contact, 
but it's only if you're face to face with the client. Okay, then you are only given permission to see that client, to bill for that client, one, two, or three hours a month. I don't know how the hell you're supposed to get anything done in an in a in-depth way at all with one hour a month. And the girl that was with Brian said, so of course you don't want to schedule all your time at once. You would want to do 15-minute increments. One client, 15 minutes. Am I going to drive across town for twelve fifty? I don't think so. So that means you see the clients at their office and you stack them one after the other after the other. And if somebody doesn't show, you're SOL. So I asked for a copy of more information. And the higher-ups had said, no, they weren't sharing any more information until they decided who they were going to offer contracts to. Okay, so I guess if they offer me a contract before I sign, that's when I'll ask to look at the paperwork. Because um, I'm going to take it. Because they told me when I asked that I could make up to $40,000 to $70,000 a year. Okay. As, as a private person, you have to pay both sides of your Social Security. You have to pay income tax in advance. So there's a lot of stuff that goes along with being self-employed. Uh, and that's what it is. It's self-employment. And I don't know if there are any small business taxes that I'm going to get stuck with because, you know, I have an LLC, which is a limited liability company, but I don't think that has anything to do with this. I have to have professional liability insurance, which I had planned on anyway, and have had that in the past. But then I have to have the ability to accept electronic signatures. And I have an iPhone, I have an iPad, I have a Mac, laptop. And I got those so that everything would coordinate. Well, it turns out that the Mac, at least that's what they're telling me, has no signature program on it. So I think every time you do something for somebody, if you expect to bill for it, they have to electronically sign for it, which means you have to carry your laptop, which means you have to have a signature keypad, because I'm not buying another telephone. So I don't want to drag my Mac Pro around. Um, I don't want to worry about leaving it in the car if I run in anywhere. I don't want to worry about getting fried if I leave it in the car. I live in near Flint. Not, not great. Not great. And so taking my Mac out and dragging it around. So <sighs> tonight I bought a new laptop. Um, got it at 350 it's a real basic, stripped-down model, um, very light, has a DVD capability with DVD writer, so I could potentially do videos and burn them to the DVDs, which could be helpful for my private business if I wanted to do um, interviews with the clients and then burn them onto CDs so they can keep them or I can have them for reference. So... I talked to my husband, and it's like, mm, we have 14 days to return it, but I think even for my private practice, this would be a good thing to have. I can schlep this one from here to December, and that, I don't know where I came up with that saying, and um, I didn't even put coverage on it, because the coverage, if you drop it, was $200. paid $350 for the damn computer. I said, if anything goes wrong, that's what I'm likely to do is drop it. So to pay $200 on the off chance I might drop it, push the cost of the computer up $550, then plus your tax, of course. And I had to pay a hundred and some dollars to get the word so I can type on the thing. So um, I should know by next week. They start out, <sighs> it's such a racket. I have to drive to Mason, which is probably an hour and 40 minutes. And the first five days of training, I'll get $50 a day. 
then after that I'll get $15 an hour driving to Mason for the next two weeks. So they're quote unquote training me, but it's going to cost me big time. But if I can make it work, then I can keep my private practice going and it'll take me closer to what I want. I told my husband that if I didn't get offered this position that I would apply for, the similar position that's with the regular community mental health. Um, it sounds good in that I had to sign releases to community mental health, which means it's not a state of Michigan anything, and so I should be able to get my retirement from state of Michigan and then do this job as well. So it's going to be a while before I'm going to be able to generate any income. And when they say $40,000 at the high end, half of that comes right off the top for expenses um, and gas and taxes and Social Security. It may even be more than that. But the one good thing is that when you buy any paper clips, you get to take them off your taxes, but you still have to buy the paper clips to start with. So I have real mixed feelings. I wanted a copy of the, the to figure out what the hell I'm going to be committing to, but they don't want to tell you that until they decide they want you. But my brain is running anyway trying to figure it out because I need to get my head in place and get my life in order. So um, I think that having this experience has made me more ready to get going on the private practice. And I know this is running long and I will put in the description what it is so anybody who didn't want to sit this long could get off. Um, so... I think I'll end this one, and I certainly will let you know the outcome next week when I hear one way or the other. Bye-bye for now.